Welcome to the Red V TV preview show, supported by A-Star Recruitment for the 2019 season, as we look ahead to the Round 7 fixture against Castleford Tigers on Friday night, as well as a roundup of all the other Saints news for the week. Um, squad news, should we just play last week's? Yeah, yeah, no changes at all. Um, can you see Justin Holbrook make any change to that 17? No. Not, um, not unless there's there's an injury. Maybe there. Kyle Lane will come back in. Yeah, well, possibly, potentially, possibly if there's a, if there's a little injury or something. But I won't be surprised to see Ashworth get another shot. Um, the Huddersfield game last week, we've had a chance to watch it back a bit. Another confident professional performance. It has to be said, a bit like the Salford game. Yeah, exactly. Especially the second half again. Um, I know some people are worried if we're just a second half team. But yeah, it's that's it. We we started getting the ball in hand and and, and started doing good things with it. Um, number of standout performances as well: Lock and Coote, Don Peru, uh, Johnny Lomax. You you got to say that that round the park we're getting, and it's good to see the likes of Don Peru getting getting a bit of yeah. Uh, because I feel he's been quiet. Recognition. Yeah. He's been quiet the first part of the season and maybe wasn't having the standout performances like last season. I don't think I mentioned it early on in the in the season, but. He's there and he's solid every week. There's no errors in his game. Yeah, I just like seeing getting a bit of recognition so we're not talking about the same old things every week and the same old players every week. Uh, that Everybody is putting their hand up. And I, I know like when you speak to people on the terraces, there are names that come up that people are saying are lazy or they're not put, um, in form at the minute. And I've no doubt that over the next couple of weeks we'll see them come to the fore. Now, we thought we, we were opening the season with a big game against Wigan. And, it, and we thought it was a marker setting down that win. Since then, we're going to have been, well... Dreadful. Dreadful. That's one word. And plenty more. I'm sure people could put in the comments to describe Wigan's yeah. start of the season. Um, and from then on, we've probably had a run of games where we've expected to win. Mm -hmm. um, is Cask for Tigers on Friday night down at the jungle um, our next real big test this season? Definitely. Um, I like how they've they build the game as classy cast versus the entertainers, as opposed to bad blood. Yeah, where everybody just ends up head butting each other. <laughs> but it's it it's almost like it, it's building it up in you the could right say way. the right way, yeah. Um, and it is going to be a test because I I thought cast might struggle with the couple of injuries and they brought in Jordan Rankin who seems to have just slotted straight in into their halves there and you wondered how they'd go. And they're, they're doing great guns. They're, they're proving me wrong because I thought they might be outside the yeah, top six. Do you know what? An enjoyable away ground to visit as well. It's, it's there's like no, wrong, yeah, and it? do you know what? I've never really come across any animosity between Saints and Cast fans, really, at all. I know we have a little bit of a joke at the expense when they were waving the champion scarves out when they weren't champions. But as a club, I really like Cast. Yeah, same. Um, that's it. I like Cast and I like Wakefield from over that way as well. Um, the fans just kind of do some Wakefield. Well, Wakefield fans have always been sound with me. It must just be you. Um, but yeah, Cass do you fans, remember? Yeah. Sorry, we were not on one of them buses years ago where we were getting chased down the street. No, all right, okay. It's um, <laughs> me then. Yeah, but yeah, you get the you have obviously have the singing in between your fans and them taking the mick uh, while the game's going on. But usually having a pint in the ground or roundabout beforehand and and seeing them after, usually a good bunch. Yeah, um, please don't prove me wrong. Dan. No, and it, and it's really good to go back in time, thirty yeah. years when we go over there. Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> I jest, I jest, I jest. Yeah, yeah. Um, other news this week. You can tell Theo Fars is out of contract at the end of the season. His agent's doing a sterling job linking him to these NRL clubs, um, unnamed NRL clubs. Yeah, well that's it. Does it? Is it the nature of the beast? Yes, absolutely. And you know what? There may well be NRL clubs looking at him and thinking, well, defence is key down yeah. down in Australia. Um, he's a good, solid, tidy half-back. They might see him maybe as more of a nine. But, yeah, th but there's th 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 a chance for him, though. Now, the thing for me is, Dan, uh, Justin Holbrook has said in his interview with Mike Critchley in this week's St. Helens Star that he obviously wants to keep Theo at the club. Yeah. So, in order to give himself some leverage in contract negotiations, you've got to come up with viable alternatives. So, obviously, the NRL is would be the next step for yeah. Theo because, let's be honest, in years gone by, you could come along and say, I'll sign for Wigan. Mm. But why would you want to take your career backwards? <laughs> Pumping this up against <laughs> ahead of Good Friday, aren't you? <laughs> but, you know what? Yeah, I mean, 
there are teams that he, he probably could go to. But, but where, could, where could he go could, in the? Where could he go in Super League? Well, you have a look. It, probably... It's it's going to be Wigan maybe. I'd have said Leeds a couple of years ago, but now they've got Lola Hay and maybe not. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's not a lot of options, which no. means the NRL clubs will come into the equation. And yeah. do you know what? Maybe I'm being a bit cynical. Maybe there are NRL, NRL clubs interested in him. And with the Australian salary cap, you can afford to take a chance. Yeah. In reality, can you see it happening? Strange, be honest. Strange things like, have happened. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you Jordan can, Turner and the likes you, have gone down. You can, under. you can name players who've gone down under, give it a go, yeah, and come and, back and and not quite made it. I mean, yeah, you you name Jordan Turner, but then comes back and it ends up like a club like Huddersfield. Yeah, but that, but that's it, and it's it's, it's some, a risk. Yeah, it is. It's a massive. I can risk. I can see it happening. I'm not too sure that it actually. Will. No, I'm gonna say, I see Theo Farge in a same chair next season. Fair enough. Call it. Um, right, Good Friday, we've just mentioned pumping it up. Tickets are now on sale. Allocated seating at the DW Stadium. Have you got your tickets yet, Kev? Yes. How many did you buy? Five. What row were you on? Z. With it being allocated seating, that means you can spend a little extra time getting refreshed before the game and then roll up to your seat at 5 to 3 if it's a 3 o'clock kickoff. Yeah, it is a 3 o'clock kickoff, yeah, correct. Are you expecting to be able to get into your seat at 5 to 3? Nope. No, never. No, it's it's we're gonna wait, and I know we've we've had a bit of um, conversation. Grief. Yeah, all right, conversation grief. Yeah, grief. Um, on Twitter about it. it. It's just a fact of the matter that we're going away on Good Friday, bank holiday. Exactly, people, people turn out for that game. How many away fans do we normally take on average to an away? Well, yeah, like thousands, twelve hundred, yeah, so max. Well, you know, for most for yeah, a lot of games, yeah. yeah. Maybe Warrington's a bit more. Yeah, maybe 2,000 for Warrington Tops. How many are we going to take to Wigan on Good Friday? Well, you Feel like you stand? Yeah. 5,000? Yeah, 4,000, 5,000, yeah. So we're taking maybe double and a bit more of what we normally take to away games. You get fans attending who probably don't go all year. Yeah. It has to be said. And it's, and it's, the, it's, a, it's a Good Friday tradition to go to the game. My experiences over the years are that people will... I've had a drink... And we'll want to congregate together as they have all, always done. Now, I've, I've, I'm, I'm fully accepting that everybody should sit it. Shit, should. Nearly. That's all for the blue for real. Yeah, but we're keeping it in. Should sit in the allocated seats, and as I'm sure you will. Um, but for the people who are going to just roll in seats, what do you do when you turn up at five to three and somebody's in your seat? Are you expecting to be able to turf them out? Um, it's well. That's just not going to happen. So where are you going to? Really? So you, well, that, that I'll would have mean to take somebody else. Somebody else, yeah. and, and all of a sudden the stewards have got a problem on their hands. And yes, we can all be politically correct and say everybody will sit in their own seats, but it's not going to happen. Um, I don't think. I think it could do further down the stand for those who are just who are going to watch the rugby, haven't got refreshed as you call it before the game. Probably the bottom half of the stand will be fine. Yeah, I would suggest if you if you don't want to be turfed out of your seat, or pe- find people in your seat, request a seat lower down in the stand. Yeah. it's just um, common sense. Will it? Ha- in, they tried it a couple of years ago, didn't they? And at the last minute, turned around and went, "Oh, hang on a minute, we've made a mistake." Uh, the lack of response from Wigan and probably Saints as well. Obviously, it's not, but it's not Saints' argument, it's not is Saints it? Argument. It's it's Wigan's. Um, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what they're playing at, but well, that's it. You'd you'd hope that um, they will make it unallocated and just alleviate this potential problem. Um, but don't be told we, we they weren't warned. Yeah, but, uh, do you know what? They can't be that daft that they're not aware of it already. Uh, well, yeah, and uh, I mean, you could be cynical. Is it applied to kind of? dull the atmosphere to try and make people sit in different pockets instead of everyone who sings and stands up tends to Gets stand the in, in the back at the back in the middle just maybe to one side as well that's what happens is it to kind of dampen that is it to sell more tickets is it because well, plenty of empty seats in the wigan end yeah well but is it is it to make sure that that stands sold out possibly so it's it is a shame because it's frustrating it's, it is it, it seems a, a, a problem that didn't need to be created. Yeah, because as a fan who will be boozing in that away end, refreshing, refreshing in that away end, I share the sympathies of everyone else who's turning around going, I could end up being carnage. This and equally, there'll be fans with 
families buying tickets from the club who don't want to be sat at the back in that area yeah. with the fans who are boozing, who would like to choose unallocated seats down at the front, who equally won't be able to. Or may, may want them halfway up, yeah, even towards the back, but can then choose to kind of sit just for, far enough away from... The ones who are singing, because as you say, they are families and the. Yeah. the if you're gonna have, if you're gonna have allocated seating for me, you've got to make an option for fans to be able to choose the seats. Load the seat plan on the website and tell people to book the tickets online. Yeah. The fans who want to be at the back will be at the back. Yeah. But that's too much like common sense. Correct. Never mind. Uh, we will keep you updated if we hear anything other news, but I'm not expecting to. To be perfectly honest. Um. Or well, one thing, don't abuse the Saints ticket staff. About the decision on Wigan's behalf, yeah. to uh, it's not to, the club's, worry, it's not the club's no. fault. It's definitely not their fault. I went in. I was chatting to one lad behind uh, the ticket counter, and he said they've had people in whinge. It's not their fault. Don't whinge at them. We will give out Wigan tickets on this number soon, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not. I'm really sure you'll probably be able to understand what they're saying to you. Says the one. You're on one. <laughs> Says the one. Says the one. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's probably long enough for this episode. Uh, we will catch you on Friday night uh, for an instant fan reaction, hopefully following another Saints win. Score prediction? Uh, 36-18. To who? Saints. That's all right then. I will go a little bit closer. I'll go 26-22. Uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And follow us on our Twitter accounts, which not many of you do. Apparently you 8,000. Uh, redv.net. Um I'm coming out like you with us about seating allocations at Wigan because it's good fun. See you soon.